Hi folks, it's a Saturday night, but I am tired. I had a long day. Before I go to bed, I wanted to share something because I haven't been posting as many videos as before. Because I have been looking at other frame drums to try to integrate some of it into Bowrun playing. And one of the things I've been practicing a lot on is one of these. This is a DAF or one of these guys. And I've also been looking at other stuff like Tars, Mizars, uh, Kinjira, Tabla, various other drums to see what would work on a Balram. And I have a few techniques for you if you're interested. First thing on this is that in frame drumming, <clears throat> they think of it a little bit differently. So we're not thinking right now of hits that like that. Instead, we're thinking of sort of like a clock, so you can get a better view here. So don't worry about my face, my face is not important at the moment. So think of it like a clock, and at 12 o'clock, it's one hand sitting like that, kind of like that. Then whatever hand that you write with, normally your sticking hand, would be at 9 o'clock. There's a bunch of different ways to actually do this, but in this case it's just for lap playing. The idea is that you have three basic strikes that work into this. They're called dum, tak, pa, at least in a more frame drumming tradition. In this case, we're going to use the same thing. Dum is played a number of different ways, but most importantly, dum is the center. It's strictly that. You can do it using fingertips. You can use the hand palm. You can use the thumb, which is normally striking down like that. Different types of doom happen at different sections. You know that if you strike in the center, it's the purest, where if you strike near to the edge, it's a little overtoned, but it still has that sort of sound. So a doom sound is that. Doom. Tak is played in two different sections. One's up here, one's over here. And tak, in some cases it's called ka. So we have tak would be this hand, ka would be here, or it would be tak ka or something like that. Um, unlike doom, tak is hitting along the rim. And in this case, you're using either fingertips you're striking in a more of a Persian method using on da, uh, daf is that you're sort of hooking the thumb here and striking down onto it. Like that. So you got doom, tuck, doom, tuck, doom, tuck, doom, tuck, doom, tuck. Ka is up here. So you'd have doom, tuck, ka, doom, tuck. And up here, you're kind of just swinging it in, like that. Or you're using fingertips. That sort of idea. Tak also has another sort of thing to it, and it's a snapping technique. The snapping technique on the top comes from doing it a few different ways. If you're thinking of these fingers like numbers, you're going to take, you know how you normally snap a finger? Same idea. So I'll show you in this hand, it's a little bit clear. It's from here, and you just snap it, and it snaps onto the rim. So instead of you have that sort of thing. And if you're going between each finger, it's inward, and then the, the middle finger is can't, it can't snap it in the same sort of way, especially if you're using the index. So if it's ring finger, middle finger, 
the index finger has to load on top of the middle finger. And then there's the third. One, two, three. 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 Okay? From the top, same sort of thing. It's easier to do it from the side, but the top also does. One, two, three. 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 Okay? Got doom. Tuck. Ka. Snaps. Like that. Pa is sort of a sound where the hand rests on the actual drum head. So where's doom sounds like this. Talk is from here. That's pa. Pa is basically where you take the hands and kind of just thump, just flat, straight on top. So if you're looking at it this way, it comes in and strikes like that. You can modify pa many different ways. You can come in, so if we're tuck the thumb underneath, it will strike first and the fingers on top. So instead of getting a, you get a, <clears throat> another thing is using Indian split hand technique, where you basically take your middle finger, or rather your middle finger here, sorry, middle, I'm not going to give you the finger, but this finger and you're rotating around it. Same idea like when you're playing with a tipper. And you're striking with one and two. So this sort of this sort of idea around sort of that sort of center. It's one way of doing it. There are a bunch of ways to doing it. But the hits are like one, two, one, two. Like that. So if you were playing. Next one is Riz, and Riz is basically taking the fingers and striking like that, but faster. It's a neat kind of a sound, isn't it? play off the rim. <laughs> Thing. Other stuff you can do, hitting from the side. Sends the vibration over the skin. It's a weak hit, but sort of thing. Some people are very good. They can actually get the skin to go that, that humming sort of lightsabery sound. I'm not very good at it. I'm very bad at it actually, because I don't think the skin has been beaten in smooth enough to do it. But it's sort of a yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not very good at it. I'm trying to get a use of it, but you can hit the center and then contour it as you go. So there's a bunch of different ways. Controlling pitch is a weird thing because I'm not even really talking much about controlling pitch. We're basically just working with, you know, how the skin is being muffled or not muffled. <clears throat> but one way of controlling pitch is pushing the top. So like in Kanjira playing, you'd see that from here. It's sort of, in another way of doing it, you can even use... um. Like in a, oh, what do they call it? Tabla playing. You can hit the center and just get that. That's sort of an effect. And that effect is by allowing your hand to sit just on there, striking, getting the note going, and then sliding once the note is, com is started. So not at the same time, it's momentarily. I'm not going to get into triplet stuff right now because there's a, so many ways of variously doing it. Um, and I'm definitely not 
looking at a traditional traditional Irish method at all. Oh, there was one more thing. Oh yeah, pitch control. The second bit of pitch control can be done sort of the way we control the bar on up the back. But you're doing it off the front. Now keep in mind, Balrons don't exactly make very good drums for this, and I'm going to show you why. Because this... It's kind of weak. It, Balrons not really designed for that type of sustain. You'd need one with a very sort of old-fashioned rim on it that rang a lot. It doesn't really work that way. It works better on the bigger frame drums for a reason, because they ring differently. going to be teaching a lot of this sort of stuff? No, not really. Just there to throw out ideas for people who are looking to try something different. You know, Baron's like a lot of frame drums. It's a frame drum with a chamfered tuning section. So if you're out there and you're using drums like the Cooperman drums or whatever, which are really based more out of the frame drumming world, you may want to try it because they work really well. Last note, if you're playing a drum with a taped head, it's not going to work the same. The drums with the taped heads don't sound, in my opinion, as good because they're not designed in the same sort of way. So, <clears throat> you know, this is where suddenly the non-taped heads are superior for tone because you have overtone play. You can do so much more with it. And lastly, the smaller the drum, the more difficult this is going to be because of how Balron's designed. It doesn't really... It, 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 there's too much friction, even with the untaped head. So a bigger drum, like this 20-inch Duff, or my 20-inch Baron, or my 18-inch um, Hedwig Shack, though the Hedwig Shack design isn't particularly good at this technique because, again, it has that semi-chamfered in sort of an effect. It's not really going to work, you know, even on the TR head, for example, which looks like it's like this at the end. It's not really going to work. It's not really designed for it. You know, my Bridget Drums uh, 20 inch, for example, though, is less chamfered and therefore more overtones can come back through and it allows for the greater sustain. So that sort of drum allows you to do the flicking and the cop, uh, uh, tuck, com, pa easier than doing it on a bar run. But that doesn't mean you don't try it on a bar run. It just means that the sound different. You know, things that I'm working on more so is how to do the, the triplet -y stuff, so the, that, that sort of equally on both sides. That takes some time. So I'm not going to be doing too many videos like like this, but this was just something I've been working on, wanted to share, and also share it with you because sometimes, you know, we don't hear enough about hand playing on Balron. You know, a good video and good players to check out would be like Tommy Hayes, or um, um, Jesus, he escapes me. I can't remember his name. Tommy Hayes has some really good stuff out there. Um. And a lot of the other players who are playing this way, it's a good place to start. But if you're someone who maybe either you prefer playing like that across the skin, which is relatively simple, or if you are, are looking into learning some of the more hand stuff, you know, David Kukerman is really, really good. He's quite well known. Glenn Velez is another person. There's so many out there. And of course, I've been putting up a few videos from uh, Mohammed Reza Mortazafi who plays a wealth of different ones, including Tom, uh, Tombak or Zarb Persian Goblet.
drum or Iranian, um, Iranian slash Turkish drum. It's quite amazing. He's got, he has incredibly fast hands and phenomenally complex polyrhythms. So yeah, we're definitely worth checking out. So it's been a while since I put up a video, finally got around to it. It's a long one, it's a 15 minute video, but I wanted to share something a little different, sort of the stuff that I've been working on, which I'm still needing to work on. You know, I'm still very much a beginner in this sort of thing. So until next time, have a good one. Back to the sticking stuff next time.